What's up, everybody? I wanted to give you an update on where we're at with the studio build. For those of you who may not have seen, we're building a control room for a mixing and mastering studio. If you didn't catch the last couple of videos, I'll link those below. And you can check out what the place looked like before we started and the details on the design. So we're at the point now where we're working on the back wall. The isolation shell is completed and it's working well. The tests have been great. I'm actually just going to play you a little clip of what it sounds like outside and then coming into the room with the speakers running at pretty high SPL. So that's what the isolation shell does. It's pretty impressive. And now we're working on the interior treatment to be able to optimize the acoustics. The back wall is super significant because in the front of the room, we have two Neumann KH420s. They are midfield full range monitors and they produce an incredible amount of SPL all the way down to 25 Hertz. So they're amazing monitors. They allow you to hear everything right down into the bottom end. But that means more acoustic treatment, especially down in the bottom end. Our front back axial room mode has been the most difficult to work with. It's the strongest and it's right down there around 30 Hertz. So the back wall acoustic treatment is going to be extremely helpful for that. Because we have so much energy in that room mode, we are using really deep porous absorption. A lot of you might be working with rock wool. And in this case, rock wool, when it gets that thick, gets too reflective. So we can't use rock wool. We're using fiberglass, the pink fluffy stuff. And it needs to be lower density because the treatment module on the back wall is going to be at least three feet thick, maybe four or five, depending on how the tests work out. And you just can't use rock wool in that thickness and have it be acoustically ideal. So we're using fiberglass. And the other thing I wanna talk about is the fact that this rear trapping is floor to ceiling. And I know in a lot of your studios, you guys might be seeing those prefabricated panels or DIY panels that are like four feet tall maybe. And you just put them in the middle of your wall. And the unfortunate part about those is they do very little down below 200 Hertz. The reason for that, A, they're not thick enough, but B, they also don't cover the areas where base frequencies accumulate the most which is in the corners of the room. So anytime you have seams joining, that's where they accumulate. So in the vertical corner of the room, where the ceiling meets the back wall and the side wall, right in that corner, huge amount of base accumulation, and then down in the bottom corner. So it makes complete sense to go floor to ceiling because that treats the upper seam, the side seam, the corners, the bottom seam. So floor to ceiling on this stuff if you really want optimal acoustics. And going as deep as we are actually works out decent for costs because fiberglass is really cheap. Fiberglass is inexpensive. With porous absorption, you get charged based on its density, not based on its depth. So a bag of fiberglass versus a bag of rock wool, fiberglass is way less expensive. So you can use a lot more of it and it's way more effective in the depths that we need to be at than rock wool would be. So yeah, that's our update. Let me know if you have any questions about trapping, acoustic treatments, porous absorption, or the studio in general, and I'd be happy to answer as best I'm able. Until then, happy music making. Catch you guys on the next one.